Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Patrick with Stacking Layers. Today I have a very special video. This is gonna be an unboxing video, so it's a little bit out of the normal for my channel, but um, I actually do have plans of doing some other product unboxing very soon. So if you're interested in that, you know, stay tuned for that. And then also let me know in the comments what you guys think about it. But um, this one is very special because this is my very first Voron machine. This is gonna be a Voron 2.4. Um, it is the August edition. And so I think that's a, a re revision two, if I'm not mistaken. And then it's the also the 350 uh, build size so it's the big one. Um, so this is really special. You guys might be surprised um, if you follow my channel at all that I don't have a Voron yet, but uh, I just didn't have the cash for it. And I've been saving and saving and saving and finally got that. This one is the kit from Seabor. Um, this is the all metal version. So what it basically means is it comes with the CNC parts and all that fun stuff. So if you don't know about Vorons, Vorons are basically DIY machines from the ground up, screw for screw. You have to put these things together, which for me, I think that's awesome. That's going to be fun. Um, but the the thing that's, um, I guess, kind of difficult with them is the fact that you have to print all of your parts. There's a lot of 3D printed parts that is designed to, you know, for, for it to work. Basically, you must do that. So if you don't have a printer that can print an ABS, then you're gonna have to outsource prints because normally these kits don't come loaded, but the Seaboard one does. It comes with all the parts you need to install, so you don't need to worry about anything. And so that's why I went with this one. It, it was approximately $1,500 with everything that I need. And like I said, with all the printed parts and with CNC parts, which are nice, I already see that there's chaotic labs. So that's already a plus. Back to that in a minute. Um, but basically I could have outsourced, or sorry, I could have bought locally, which I really wanted was the LDO kit. But the, the price difference, the LDO kit, it was approximately, uh, I think it was like $1,800. Um, and then not including shipping or something like that. So it was gonna be, you know, close to about $2,000. And with that kit, it doesn't come with the Raspberry Pi and it does not come with any of the print, printed parts. You still have to print all of your own stuff or source them out. So the kit can actually jump pretty high very quickly. Um, whereas this kit for the 1500 or so, I'll put a link in the description so you can see exactly that, uh, see exactly this kit that I bought and what it comes with. But it basically comes with everything you need including the printed parts for there's the decorative parts that aren't required but are nice to have and then this one with the cnc or if you get the cheaper version then you get the printed parts so basically you're, you're ready to go and start building right when you receive your package so it's really nice um for the price difference it's not ldo motors and things like that but i do at least i should be in here i did order the high win uh linear rails so they're a higher quality linear rails i'm already seeing that it's chaotic lab stuff for the cnc which is a big bonus because i've heard a lot of great things about them I know a couple of people that use them, and so I'm already good with that. Um, so for the price difference, it was kind of a no-brainer. So we'll see. I, I can't, you know, attest to how well, how good quality everything is so far because, like you see, I'm opening it now. But um, granted that everything is good, and you know, the things that maybe aren't, I can probably just tinker easily myself and get things going. It's a, it's a good price difference. So let's uh, let's get into here, anyways. So right off the bat, like I said, Chaotic Lab stuff, that is a good thing because I have heard really good stuff about them. Um, these are the CNC parts. So normally these are the parts that you would have to print all of these different things. So you got your, your Z drive kit. So these are big old things that the Z drive uh, pulleys sit in. Um, tensioners, actually tensioners is cool. That's a tool free tensioner kit. So it should have a wheel for tensioning as opposed to using, you know, pulling and using uh, stretchy things, whatever. This is also tensioning. So as you can see here, decently packed. Let's just take one of these out. I'm not gonna unbox every single one of these uh, CNC things because that probably could take forever. I'm, I don't, I'm gonna try to not to make this video too long for you guys. So that's a CNC part. It looks really good actually. Yeah, I mean, good, good thick uh, metal. It's all solid of course, and then they cut it all out. No tool marks, nicely anodized. I think it's put together as you can see. Oh, wow. That tensioner wheel is smooth. <laughs> That's a really smooth action. Normally, I'm used to these tensioner things. Obviously, there's no belt, so there's no tension being pulled on it. But normally, you feel more of a, uh, it's like it's it, not stuck, not binding, but it has a little bit more of a, of a stickiness to it. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but this one is freewheeling. That's, that's a really nice, smooth action. That's cool. So that is 
What one was that again? That was for the X and Y belt adjusters. Let's get this back in correctly so I don't mess anything up there. And you got screws and things that you need in there. So I'm assuming each one of these boxes is going to have everything that it needs for that specific unit. Um, let's open the big guy. First, let's get this out of here. Oh, we got this piano wire. <laughs> I think this is for uh, supporting supporting the CAN cable. I went with the, it's got a CAN bus um, system, the SB2209, I believe, from Big Tree Tech. Um, for the um, printhead, I can see inside here is the, the stealth burner print, printhead. We'll get to that in a second. Um, so yeah, this will be to help support, I'm assuming to help support the cable so it doesn't droop down into your print. Let's get that out of the way. So we got the Z drive kit. This is a hefty package, a little heavy. Wow, look at these chunky things. Look at that. So all, all aluminum and a good weight to it. So it's not this flimsy stuff. So nice chunky parts. This is good because this is where the, the, the bottom of your machine is actually the foot, the rubber rubber foot thing there. Those are going to attach in there. This is cool. That machine wise is really nice. You know, granted, I'm, I'm assuming they're all within perfect spec. You know, CNC does have a better tolerance than than the um, printed stuff, so it should be perfect. So as long as they they designed it right, should be perfect. But no tool marks again. Everything's really good. I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm actually really impressed with the quality so far. That's a little interesting, the, the price that they got going on here. You've got pulleys and things. So, yeah, again, everything you need for that. Oh, I'm happy. I'm happy. Let's get deeper in here. So, yeah, like I said, all the CNC stuff that is required. So let's put this off to the side. <clears throat> and this, I can see, I can already see the, the tool, the tool head. This is the stealth burner kit. So these are printed parts. So as you can see, everything is printed. What's this label say? Oh, Sunlu. So it's Sunlu ABS they're using on this. Red and black, of course. There's the red and black. Um, let's see. Let's open it up, see what kind of print quality there is in here. Uh, what do we got here? This is, oh, this is that Nevermore kit. So it comes also, it comes with a lot of stuff. I mean, as you see here, as I continue talking, you're going to see that this kit is actually surprisingly good because this is the Nevermore edition. So if I'm not mistaken, what this is, is designed, it sucks in the air from underneath the bed or like it sits underneath the bed and it sucks the, the fumes and stuff from when you print an ABS, for instance, and it pushes it through an activated carbon filter. I guess I'm going to have to buy some carbon filters. Um, so you put like these like activated carbon charcoal stuff inside there. And it, as it pushes it through, it's supposed to absorb the smell to kind of reduce the smell of ABS. Um, I'm also going to try to get a vent system installed in my, in my area, so to, to mitigate that problem. Yeah, print quality is okay. I can see, I mean, it's got like, looks like they maybe had their belt tensioning too tight or something, so I can see some banding on this stuff. Let's open this up. Let's, let's pull this one. I see the lines on. Oh, yeah, well, I mean... A slight gaps inside there, but yeah, you see, uh, see, is the camera picking that up? You can see there's all these little stripes as banding. That's kind of indicative to, or uh, it, it shows that the belts are kind of too tight because they're like they're about two millimeter spacing all the way across evenly. Uh, I think that's just belt, or it could be their motor that they're using on the machine. But actual layer is pretty decent. This, this would be considered a, a, an okay part. Uh, the banding, they, that's just they need to adjust their machine. Looks like they printed it on there, so they had good bed adhesion. Doesn't look like it warped up or anything like that, so that's good. It means everything should print or fit together. And the top layers look decent enough. So it, it seems like it's still within boron standards from what I've read about. This would be considered a pass in my book, so I'm not going to complain about that. Print quality is decent. They, could, they could probably need to adjust their belts on that machine, whatever printed that one. Let's see if this one has that same problem. Oh, oh, don't lose parts. I've got little clips or something. Yeah, so yeah, fit and fit on parts are good. That's nice there. It looks like they use some supports. You gotta clean that up. Little areas where supports were used, maybe. Hmm, that's a little weird, but overhangs, they're all tight and good, so that's fine. 
Yeah, so a little, little bit of banding, but nothing terrible. Even the ghosting, there's virtually no ghosting, just a tad, tad bit, so... No, I'm, I'm happy with that. That's a pass. That works. Print quality is okay, it's from what I've seen so far. So anyways, moving on. Enough about that. So that's my hot end kit and never more kit, it seems. Let's get this sealed so it doesn't. And nothing gets lost. I'm afraid to lose a single part here. What's in the bigger box? We have more parts, it sounds like. Yep. Okay, so this is all the decorative stuff. So this is the kit. Yeah, I'm, yeah. so this is all the star. No, there, anyways. These are the decorative parts. So these are the things that are extra, um, which are included in the, in the main price. I, I just went for the whole clicked everything on <laughs> to send. Um, so this is going to be, you know, your skirt guards and things like that. These are not required for the machine to function, but they help to keep fingers from going underneath in the electronics, and it just looks makes it look cool. So there's fan shrouds and covers and things like that. So there's a print. Again, print quality looks decent on this stuff, too. Um, yeah, let's check this out. So you got the top layer on this one. That's a nice big top layer. Whoa, whoa, whoa. In there. This is some sort of cover, it looks like. So, good adhesion. Seems like bed adhesion was fine. Overhangs are fine. Top layer's nice and smooth. There's got some artifacts in there, but I can't feel that, so that's nice. No, oh, everything looks good. No, oh, I'm impressed. I, I, I would have to say that the, the print quality of the parts from them are definitely on par with what it should be. Oh boy, there's a lot of parts in there. <laughs> there's, that's one thing I see people talking about is the, the biggest, I guess, issue. It's not necessarily an issue because I like to build things, but the biggest issue for some people with these Voron machines is that you do need to build it. And for some people, it takes several weeks to build. Um, so lots of parts, as you can see. So if you don't like building, then this kit's not for you. But if you do enjoy building or if you want to give yourself a good challenge, <clears throat> this is a, an amazing kit to, to build up. And it's very customizable and uh, upgradable and all that fun stuff. What's this? A little nothing. <laughs> so here we have electronics. Or let's see. Oh, what's the bed? We got the bed. We got this red wire. Wow, that's soft. <laughs> that's got to be silicone wire, I'm assuming. Yeah, okay, it's silicone wire. That's probably like. 24 gauge wire so there's no connections on that so i'm not sure what this is for we'll see wiring i got lots of wire so that's not really a big issue for me if i need more or different wire yeah we've got silicone wire we have a drag chain this now because i'm using the can bus system you only get one this is going to be for the z motion uh, yeah should be for the z motion so um with this bed, with this design, the printer, it's the fixed bed, so the bed doesn't move, and it's a core XY, so in case for those that don't know, and it's the flying gantry one, so the gantry moves up, X and Y move up, so basically your Z motion and X and Y motion are all on the same platform, as opposed to the bed moving down for your Z. Um, so that's why it's only that, and with CAN bus, it uses this cable here, which I can already tell because it's the Big Tree Tech one, like I have with other machines. Um, so this is your CAN bus. So this is the only wire that needs to go up to the print head to control everything. Your hot end, your stepper motor on the on the extruder, uh, fans, the whole nine yards. So that's a really nice setup. <clears throat> one simple wire instead of having a whole bunch of, I think this one replaces like approximately 18 wires that would normally go through a, a drag chain on the XY system. So that's really good. So you have your power and then you're a CAN bus. And those are the only wires that come through. Um, I see still that they're doing it. Uh, this is one gripe I'm going to start off with. Uh, they're tinned. So this is the normal thing that Big Tree Tech um, CAN bus cables come with, but I've noticed a lot of other companies still do this too. These wires are tinned. These are the power wires. So these are going to be something that are going to be passing a, a, a good amount. It's not a very high current, and it's only 24 volts. But the problem with the, the solder, if you're not familiar at all, the, the soldering on these things can cause terminals to heat up and burn. Um, what happens is that the solder can crack when you when you, you know, um, tighten it down, 
uh, in the clamp there, it can crack the solder, make little micro cracks. And over time, it'll start drifting and heating up. And the more heat causes the solder to drift out more, which creates a loose connection, which creates more heat. And it's basically it's a thermal runaway system that the machines cannot print or pick up. It's no, there's no sensors that can sense that type of uh, thermal runaway. And they will not blow a fuse because it's not drawing technically enough current to do anything to the fuse. It's not actually overcurrent or anything like that. So all it does is it heats up at this very spot. It's creating a little bit of extra resistance. And that can cause, I'm sure if you've paid any attention to the community, you see every once in a while someone might post of a burnt terminal, normally on the heater bed. And it's because of this. This is one of the normal one, number one causes is because of the soldered tips go into those crimps. They're, they're improperly crimped. And then over time, they start resisting or causing resistance, bad connections, and it will burn. So my advice Clip these things off. Unfortunately, this is very short, so I'm gonna have to cut into here. So if you decide to do that, be careful because you don't wanna cut and nick any of the insulation on the wires. Um, but cut this off. At the very least, use just bare wire or even better, use furls, um, which um, when I go to build, I can show you what the furls look like. But that, that's just a public safety announcement. And guys, Big Tree Tech, uh, all printer companies, anybody that's in the industry that's watching this, stop doing this, stop stop putting solder, you know, it, it put furls on things. It, it's, it's much more safe or just leave them bare or some other sort of, you know, mechanical hard connection. Stop putting solder on power cables. <laughs> you know, it works fine for a bit, but over time it can possibly cause burning issues. Anyways, enough of that. <laughs> I just, that bothers me, but it's not a big deal on this. That's, I already kind of know about it and I, I have the tools necessary to crimp it. So anyways, Oh boy, um, we got tape, double-sided tape. Uh, so there's gonna be things probably for like C channels and stuff like that that I need to tape down. Okay, so here is the, the, the wiring diagram. And one thing I wanna point out while I'm doing this unboxing, you're gonna notice that I do not have the, um, the controller board, the Big Tree Tech Pi, or the five inch display. Those do come with the kit, the one that I'm gonna have in the link. But I, uh, I contacted them because I already have these components. So I contacted them and asked them if I could get a reduced price and not include these. And they worked with me perfectly and helped me out with that. So that's why I don't have them in here when you see me unboxing this stuff. But uh, they do come with it. I just want to point that out. But anyways, as you can see, it's going to be coming with the Octopus Pro um, from Big Tree Tech. It also has the Big Tree Tech Pi, Big Tree Tech 5-inch uh, display, which is an HDMI touch display, and uh, the Big Tree Tech um, EBB. 2209 this is the or sorry the sb 2209 so this is going to be it's a special can bus board that controls everything um for the hot end so you're like i was mentioning earlier the stepper motors and or the stepper motor the heaters the everything so that's a really nice thing it's nice and compact fits inside the stealth burner uh, model so all big tree tech electronics which i'm very happy with as you know from my channel it's what i basically that's all i use <laughs> um it also comes with this uh Seabor uh, cartographer. It's basically, it's kind of like a, I'm, I'm just going to say it's like a, a beacon uh, clone in a sense, but basically what it is, if you're not sure what the beacon is, this little guy uses uh, eddy current sensing. So it sweeps across the bed really fast to do leveling um, on the bed. So it can, it can somehow use the currents that are generated as it sweeps across the aluminum plate and it knows the distance with that. So I'm not going to pretend that I know the exact electronics and how that works inside, but from what I've seen videos, it's really cool because you just do little kind of like quick little probes and then you just sweep back and forth and you can get a very fine bed mesh without needing to wait 20, 30 minutes for it to probe every single thing. Now, personally, I honestly like regular probes because it's mechanical, but uh, we'll see how this works. If this works great, then that's gonna be my new, my new tool. So we'll see how that goes. And of course, I'll make a video, I'll talk about uh, how this works and, or, how, how well it works in the future when I actually get it put together and using it. So stay tuned for that. Anyways, let's get this put aside. So we got a heated bed, 650 watt bed, looks by Seabor. And it does have, yeah, it has the 468 MP adhesive on it. So this is an adhesive that's rated for higher heat. It should be okay. Um, I think that's probably more recommended to do a uh, RTV, which is a silicone, a high temperature silicone adhesive. But since this is on here, <clears throat> I'm just going to use that. Yeah, it should be okay. So RT actually, this looks like there's some RTV in here. So it's this, this red silicone stuff, and it's designed to, to hold on well. Thermal fuse is already installed, so that's fun. 
that we don't have to worry about doing any cutting or splicing of wires. So this thing is going to get attached to the metal bed. And then um, if for some reason the, the program doesn't notice that the bed is overheating, this one will cut the power at over 125 Celsius. So if this sense is 125 plus, it disconnects the power. So that's nice because this is a, as you see, 220 volt. This is a mains voltage bed. This is nothing that you want to, you know, fiddle around with and let go into a thermal runaway. That can't start a fire. So it's nice to have fuses. This is the bed. Got a nice, looks like a PI top on it. And uh, I'm not going to pull that out. It's, it's in there pretty good right now. But that is a chunky bed underneath. It's got about that much aluminum. So what would that be? Uh, um, yeah, measurements wise, maybe almost a centimeter, it feels like. So big chunky bed, aluminum. You're going to take my word for that because I'm not going to drag that out just yet. So, but, you know, nothing to see. It's, it's, it's a bed, right? It's an aluminum chunk of metal. Big, big chunk of aluminum. Let's get this back in here. Power cord. And then we got these things here. These look like wire channels. And okay, <laughs> this is this is one one way that they're saving money. Um, now, uh, I haven't really talked about what I do for a living, but I, I build and uh, test uh, control systems, industrial control cabinets um, for, for thrusters, uh, for maritime stuff. And so we install a lot of things like this, but uh, this one is probably the cheapest one I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> It basically, it looks like it's just a rolled, rolled cut. There's, they have like a machine that it, as it's extruding, it goes and cools and then it stamps out this pattern. We use ones that are, are, are molded. Obviously, it's going to be a higher end. But luckily, this has nothing to do with the way the machine works whatsoever. And as long as things hold together, it's fine. So these are designed for, you put your wires through there and it makes it just look clean. They're just, that's all they are. They, they, they do nothing else but to make it look nice. And since it's hidden, it doesn't really matter anyways. Oh, it's got a good click. Oh, that's acceptable. Oh, those aren't oh, those aren't falling apart. No, that's that's good. It may be a cheap cheap version of it, but it is perfectly acceptable. That wouldn't be an issue. I would have liked to have holes in here though, so I don't have to drill my own holes. Or maybe that's what the tape's for. Ah, they're gonna be hanging upside down. Maybe I'll drill some holes. We'll see. But basically, what it is, you you run your wires through, so you can have it go in through one side, and then you run them through the channels, and then they come out from another hole somewhere else where it needs to connect. So you don't have a big bundle of wires just hanging all over zip tied together. So they'll all be nicely stowed away in there. So it does nothing for the fun functionality of the machine at all. So it doesn't really matter. You can basically throw these away and use zip ties if you want to, and it won't change anything. But this is nice. Not the top quality, but also nothing, <laughs> nothing bad about it. So these are linear rails. So these should be all high wind rails. I want to make sure that. And yes, they are high wind rails. I went with the high winds just because I don't want to have to change things later. And the high winds are supposed to be the good quality stuff. And seen from the stamping and serial number stuff on here, they look like legit real ones because there are some counterfeit ones. So be careful out there. But these appeared to be the real deal. So that's good. Do they? Yeah, it looks like the carriages also have stamps on. So I'm, I'm confident that these are real. That's nice. All high wind. My, my thought is, you know, I'm going to be building this thing. I don't want to have to keep rebuilding and rebuilding, changing parts. So I just went with the top versions of what they had available. We're still going to rebuild stuff, right? Because <laughs> that's what these machines are. They're, they're constant projects, which is why I like them. I'm, I'm, I'm finding myself enjoying sometimes building and messing with the machines more than I am about printing things. So <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at with, with how to build stuff. You know, for people that don't care about building, they only want to print and that is it. There's obviously other machines out there, you know, like the, obviously the bamboo system that's really popular right now. Um, you know, I guess, who is that? Sovol has a new machine that they just released that is basically based on this machine here, but in a, in a design that is, you know, set up to uh, basically just put together in, in less than an hour because you just kind of click things together like a traditional 3D printer thing. Uh, oh, you know what? I didn't check if there was anything underneath there. Hold on. Sorry. And so... Yeah, so these things are, are more time consuming for the build, but it gives you that that sense of, yeah, there's another layer, sense of you know, pride, I guess. And if you like to build stuff, then then uh, you have more, more capability of customizing things like that. Whereas these put together stuff like the bamboo machine, you can't really customize too much. Anyways, enough of that. What else have we got in here? We got all the aluminum. We got a big kit of something here. 
this is all the hardware. Nicely packed. That's good that it came in a box like this. So there you go. All compartmentalized. All your parts you need. You got your T-nuts and your screws and yada yada. Looks like there's the Stealth Burner gear kits. That's for the extrusion stuff. Um, yeah. Heat sets. Now, of course, there is still some heat sets. That's another thing I want to point out. If you get the printed part ones, you are going to need to still insert all of the heat set. Those are those things that go into the plastic in the holes so you can screw into it. So it's not 100% finished. It's still a DIY kit. It's just basically you get all the stuff you need to do it. So that's something to keep in mind. If you get the plastic version, you will need to put the heat sets in still. Bowden tube stuff, uh, it's got, it has a tube somewhere, I'm assuming, but it's used what's called a reverse Bowden tube. It is a direct drive system, but it still pulls the filament from outside through the machine. And so it has a tube that goes from the back of the machine to the hot end. So that's why there's couplers in a tube. I'm assuming there's a tube somewhere in here. Anyways, hardware kit, what's underneath there? Oh, we got some more electronics now. Okay, let's get this off the side. All right. We do have some stuff. We got some wires here. Yep, there's your power supply, your input with a filtering system on it. Um, I'm assuming everything is in there. Should have a fuse inside here. I'm not going to pull that out. It's a drawer. I will check, of course. But uh, yeah, fuse. And then a, this is for filtering signal. Keep things stable. Crimped already, so it's good. They seem to be properly crimped. Yeah, they're, they're good. They're passable. Like I said, I do, I do testing, so I'm very nitpicky about the uh, wires. So I'm going to be talking about wires, I'm sure, more. Um, what is this? We've got, a, we've got a, a, DIN, a DIN rail connector. This is for clamping something. Um, DIN rails. Ooh, are there DIN rails in here? I see aluminum. What are these? Oh, <laughs> extruded DIN rails. That's funny. I, I'm used to uh, stainless steel style DIN rails, so this, yeah. Aluminum ones. So these are DIN rails, if you are not familiar. <laughs> uh, these are what you clip your stuff to. So like this, for instance, this is a, a DIN rail clamp. So you, it allows you to fasten other items on top of that. And then you would squeeze it and then the claws grab on. And so now you've got a solid connection. And then what's nice about DIN rails is you're not permanently attaching things. So if you decide later, I don't want that right there, then you can go ahead and, and move it over. Ooh, sorry, hopefully that didn't pick up that squeal or take it off so you can relocate things so that's really nice about these din rails and um there's all sorts of 3d printed versions of for clips and stuff so you can easily organize your things anyways that's what that is i wonder what we're needing to clip we've got a little box in here of something this is what is that a 10 amp something let's open it oh this is the relay Okay, so this is the solid state relay. This is what's going to control the bed. So in here is the signal from the from the board. So it's from three volts to 23 volts direct current. And then when that receives a signal, it switches this side, which is the 32, or sorry, the, the mains voltage that is uh, going to the bed. So that's what that's at, all about. That's probably what that little clip is for, I'm assuming. And we got some angles. Little, little trying oh, right angles for I guess corners or something these look like driver these are big tree tech drivers yeah oh we got two different ones oh that's right so they come with the 2240 drivers for the x and y and then the rest of them your z motors are on 2209 drivers I don't know exactly why they split them that way I I, I could be wrong but I believe that these the 2240s are capable of reporting back um, temperature so maybe that's why, so we can see what the temperature of those guys are, since those are the ones that are really going to be working the hardest. Maybe that's why they went with that? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look into that one. But um, capability-wise, they're, they're equal, more or less, between. All right, I think these can possibly put out a little bit more current, but they're going to be putting out more current than what we need at this moment. So that's cool. Drivers are there. Not much more to see in there. The, all your aluminum for building the frame. Now we can get that back together. Let's see. Okay, here's box number two. I flipped over that already too, so I don't mess with the camera. I bumped it when I was trying to move it here. I've, something I forgot to point out on the other box for shipping. It came with these uh, corner guards on them, which was really nice to see. I don't. I think it's my first consumer product that I've received that actually has these things on it. They're nice because they're they're hard plastic and they, you know, my my 
don't know about you guys, but my shipping companies that are shipped to or whatever delivered to me are very rough of packages. So this probably saved my package because I can see, I don't know if you can tell on here right already, that it's, it's been handled wrong. And that's typical. I've actually had some where I've had footprints on the packages. It's unbelievable. A countless number of complaints don't fix that. But uh, it's, it was cool to see those. That was nice. That was a very nice touch. Um, I haven't seen another company do that yet. So anyways, package number two. It does come in two packages. It's a lot of machine, like I said. Let's see. Let's get this opened. Oh, look. Looks like there's uh, corner guards on the inside of this one. I thought they just decided not to put it on there. So we have electronics and lots of it. So this is going to be my electronic stuff. So we got the motors. Looks like with the power supply, which I need to check out. We have, what is this? Purple something. We got filament. That's cute. <laughs> I think it's the smallest roll of filament or spool that I've ever seen. Uh, oh, it's PLA, not ABS. That's, that's fine. But I'm surprised they didn't send in ABS to, to do your first test print. But whatever. Purple. I guess that's Seaboard's color. That's fun. I've never had purple filament before. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got filament. Yeah, I'll just put that back in the hole so I don't lose it. <clears throat> we got belts. Oh, let me open up these things. This one's not rolled up so well, so let's see. Yeah, okay. They're Gates belts. I wasn't sure. I, I read that it should be Gates belts, which is a, is a good company. They're the Gates Power Grip, so uh, quality. And I'm really surprised at this kit so far. Quality parts, quality belts. I mean, again, these are not industrial, high-end, industrial-grade things, but this is what the community uses, Gates belts. Or, you know, There's a lot of other really cheap stuff out there that are... Uh, are just that they're very cheap they're inexpensive but they also are very flimsy they break easily they don't they feel weird they feel like hard plastic sometimes so that's nice to see there we got tapes we got end stops we got this thing is yeah so this is a bowden tube it's red cool what's this oh yeah this is another part of the cnc stuff so this is going to be the the um looks like the here i'll bring it out looks like it's going to be the uh, print head holder yeah so there's a little belt squeezer parts. And then that's, this is where that other probe is. I haven't seen that probe yet. Maybe I overlooked it, maybe it's in here. Um, so yeah, yeah, just a, a mount for the hot end. Again, the metal seems nice and clean. I got some fans, so this is, okay, good. I don't have to buy charcoal. This is the Nevermore kit. So we got fans for the Nevermore kit and the charcoal bags, cool. Let's get this over the side. We have some more wires, more this is for attaching the CAN bus. Well, yeah, this is for, for the octopus board. I think I'm going to actually be using my M8P that I've done a video on previously. Since I have that board, it'll, have, it'll allow me to have my CB1 and M8P all in one unit instead of having a separate Raspberry Pi. But I'm still torn because I actually do have an Octopus Pro 2 uh, also. And so, well, we'll see huh? when it comes to that point. But yeah, here's your heaters. This is all your hot end wiring looks like. Nice. There's the furls. There we go. So this is what I meant by those soldered connectors. This is what it should have. So these are furls, if you didn't know. And what it is, is the, these, are, these wires go through the metal part. It's got a plastic guard, as you can see. And then they're crimped down on the wire, which compresses the wire into a hard bundle. So it essentially turns stranded wire at the tip into a solid wire, but with no soldering. And it, it's this system, when you clamp down on it, you know, obviously, if you over clamp on it, you're going to ruin it anyway, so don't do that. But when you clamp down on it, then it's it's a good solid connection. This is actually for for my work. This is required. It's it's actually um, something that we we must use on all uh, connections. So that's a very nice thing. And then we also, of course, got the spade terminals. This one is yep, properly crimped. Good. So everything looks good there. That's nice. They have the um, these are the LEDs. So there's little LEDs that go into the self burner for lights for lighting things up, obviously. And they've already pre-soldered and wired. That's fun. Don't have to worry about that. So a lot of a lot of that type of small fiddly stuff is done for you. That's good. Let's put those there and whatnot. Yeah. Let's check this out. This is supposed to be a Meanwell power supply. Meanwell power supplies, if you're not sure, I guess I'm saying that too much, is... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it looks like a real one. So these are good quality stuff. These are the same company that makes things for a lot of medical stuff. This is, again, something the community uses a lot and recommends. So for an affordable power supply, this is very adequate, and it does look like a real one. It's got all the proper markings on it. 
CE has a good space between it. So we're good there. Nice. I'm I'm seriously happy with this, guys. Obviously, I'm happy because I'm gonna finally have a Voron, but uh, these parts look like good quality stuff. So here it is. This is a brand. It's self-branded. I thought it was going to be Sepper Online Motors. This is just directly seaboard.com. Yeah, I'll say. So let's see. Nah, action feels good. Maybe it is Stepper Online. They just put their stamps on it. There's no play in the motor or anything like that. So yeah, it feels right. We'll see when it starts up, how that works. And again, crimped. You got your JST connection, so you're good there. Let's see what these guys are. These Okay, so these are Stepper Onlines. Here's Stepper Online motors. Okay, so maybe it's just the one over there that's not. Uh, anyways, nice long cable. Good, good. So we shouldn't have to do crimping on that. I would have liked to see the JST connection instead of these DuPont ones on there. But I have the kits, so I can easily crimp those on. Again, smooth action. No play on the shaft. Good. That should be fine. Like I said, the, the um, stepper on line motors, they, they serve us well. So what's in here? Got a little box. Oh, bearings. Lots and lots of bearings. We got the pulleys. These are for the Z motion so this is going to be where the belt goes for the up and down motion of course and we got this box that's popped open okay so this is the stealth burner kit or the uh, the sb2209 this is what i was talking about this is the cam bus system so your cam bus cat with single cord is going to go up here and then all of this there's two parts to it it all fits inside the um in the stealth burner head big free tech so I'm very familiar with this one already. It's almost not able to fit in there. Okay. There we go. And yeah, the, the crimps and stuff that come with it. So it looks like they just unpacked it from the regular box and put it in a protective box. I already saw this. We got the Fetus uh, hot end. So this is going to be the Dragon hot end. Yep. That's the Dragon hot end. Very nice, straightforward. I really enjoy their company. If you've never used Fetus stuff or Fetus, how do you even say that? But anyways, um, they have good quality stuff. So this is this is not some kind of no name, you know, clone thing. This is the real deal. And I've always been happy with their products. So that's good to see. I got this. Okay, so this is that that sensor thing that I was talking about, the bed sensor. Let's get this open. Oh, it's smaller. That's good. It's smaller than I thought it was gonna be. So that's this little guy right here. It's, they call it a cartographer. And this is what that emblem is, cartographer. And it comes with a little breakout board, and then it plugs into whatever. And this attaches underneath the, the hot end. And so, let's see, is the reflection able to get that? Yeah. So you see there's a coil in there, right? So this little coil is able to pick up the... Um, the it's like an inductive coil, but it is an inductive coil. And so as it sweeps over aluminum, it, it, that sweeping motion creates a small current. That's what's called an eddy current. And it somehow is able to use that information to, to be a, a distance sensor. We got a couple little, yeah, it's just CAN bus stuff in there, looks like. So I don't know, it might, it might be processing on the chip. I'm not sure. I honestly, I don't know exactly how it works. I haven't looked at any code for that stuff. Um, or how, it, how it's doing its process. I don't even know if the, that source code is available. Um, nice. Looks like we got sun on. We got sun on fans. Um, good brand. I wonder what this one's for. This one has a uh, an activation of ninety nine percent. So this is a full speed fan. This is a, this should be a fast fan. Hmm. But I like sun on. I'm wondering why they went with that style. Uh, I'm questioning because normally when you have these A ninety nines, that means that you have to ramp it up to like basically put it onto hundred percent for it to start up and give it its full power. So they're not really good for, um, uh, what would that be? For, for, for like having like low percentage or half 50% fan speed and stuff like that. So maybe it's just a cooling fan. We'll see. Well, obviously it's a cooling fan. It's a fan, but uh, I mean for like cooling electronics or something. We've got more fans down inside here. I'm not going to dig them out because they look like they're wedged in their well for right now. But I don't know that model, but uh, we'll see. I mean, most of the time fans are fans. They don't really suffer dramatically for um quality as long as they're not like junk of course but 
Extra crimps. We we'll have to be crimping stuff. Oh, we got more feet, I guess. Good. Have spare feet. That CNC kit came with the feet. We have tools. Lots of different tools. We got a deburring little tool. Screwdriver, Allen wrenches, and what's this under here? We got a, a Zorkin. What's a Zorkin? <laughs> Zorkin. Oh, they're, <laughs> they're clippers. Yeah, side, side snips. <laughs> Zorkin. That's, look at that. Um, Amer. It's, it's, it's not fully American flag. It's missing the stars. That's funny. Made in China, of course. Yeah, can't have too many of those guys, though. I've actually lost my last pair just the other day. That's good to have. There we go. Um, yeah, fans, fans, wires, more wires and things like that. I guess these are the power wires. Oh, uh -oh. this is not good. This is not good. OK, here's here's my first big gripe. Oh, no, I'm gonna have to recrimp these. So look at these crimps. So these are furls. And like I said, this is what you should go for. But this is a prime example of how they should not look. Let's see, is the camera going to even get that? Put my hand in front. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell, but they're cupped. They're completely cupped. These things are, are improperly damaged or crimped. I don't even know if there's wire in there. But basically, they're in a U shape. Right? You're able to see that, right? That is considered a bad crimp. That's no good. That's a hundred percent fail. Not detrimental, but if you get your kit and see that, clip these off and put new ones on because they are not supposed to be <laughs> they're not supposed to be cupped like that. Come on, guys. Oh no. Seabor, if you're watching this, this needs to be fixed. So hopefully that does. I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to them. Cause that's not good. Again, it's like I said, it's not. It's not something that's easy, not easily fixed. You just cut this part off, put new ones on, you're good to go. So do it right. If you get this in your kit, do it right. Okay, fix them. Because what would happen is this is not going to get a good connection. And because of how thin that is, that, that's indicating that these are the wrong size for the gauge of wire. Um, I'm going to have to check these wires actually make sure that they have a good enough gauge built inside, that they're not too thin inside. But basically what's going on here is the machine that they're using, for one, isn't designed for this type of crimp. That's kind of weird though. that's crimping in the center like that but there's no wire inside. It looks like they're empty. I can't pull them off, so there's something in there crimped, but that's not good. Maybe, the, maybe their machine broke some of the wires and they pulled off too much. But anyways, this is, this is right now, that's my biggest gripe so far of this kit. That needs to be changed 100%. I have wire and crimps and everything, so it's no big deal for me, but for somebody that might not have that or might not know about that, then that can potentially cause overheating on terminals, and that can lead to melting of your terminals or absolute worst case scenario, not as common, but worst case scenario, start a fire. But uh, in any event, that can cause improper connection, which will create too much resistance at the terminal. How do the spades look? The spades are not crimped very well either. What happened with this? All the other crimps look so good. These are fine. There's not, a little bit, not enough wire inside there. I'll probably redo those too. But the crimps, ah, no, the crimps should have been tighter. Ah, I'm not too happy with the crimps on, on this, this little package. So check out your power wire cables. They don't, somebody, whoever made these were not happy with their job. Oh, wow, look at that one. Somebody was having a bad day. Look at that. This one's a complete fail. That will not do good. That can actually create an issue. Um, again, with overheating, not going to be directly related to a fire per se, but if it goes un unnoticed, I mean, they're, they're crimped, they're, they're held in there well, but what's going on is these, these parts like this, when they're looking like that, it's, it's not a full connection. And because of that, depending on the amperage, it can get overheated. Even look at that, it's all bent. Wild. I don't know what happened to this one. Somebody wasn't happy at work that day, but luckily I, I, it's, I'm in, the profession that does mess with wires on a daily basis so that's not a problem for me but if you guys are looking at these inspect all of your connections just make sure they're crimped right like if you if you scroll back in the video and see that first one i showed to where it was nice and round and well filled up inside the, the crimp that's how they should look um some machines will stamp down harder so it can be a little bit more flat um but not like this it should not be you should be able to see still the wires inside by looking straight down at them like that. And here, I don't, I don't see a single thread of wire. And there's, 
it might be like back here and actually the down inside it's the camera's probably not showing that too well i'm not sure but down inside you can see there's a hole in there and so what's happened is the tube that's supposed to go around the wire is actually broken inside there so seaboard if you're seeing this don't know if you are or not but fix that please that can be a safety hazard anyways we got zip ties belts that's not a deal breaker by far. I do want to point that out. That's not a massive deal breaker at all because that is a very easy thing to fix. But uh, for someone that doesn't know, that can cause problems in the future. What do we got in here? So here we go. We got all of our carbonate. So yeah, I didn't say that, but it does come also with all the enclosure stuff needed. So these are the enclosure windows and it should come with also back plates. We got, this is a different one. Yeah, so these are going to be the black back plates. Back plates and under plates and whatnot. So there's three? Yeah, of course. Over and under the electronics and then the back. So nothing more in the box. So that's the kit. I mean, in all, oops, I just bumped the camera. In all, this kit is actually very nice considering the, the price difference from other kits. Okay, so considering the price from other kits, this is actually very satisfactory. I'm, I'm impressed. Overall, in general, all the parts that come with it are, are well, um, or sorry, are good brand parts. They're on the lower cost, which obviously makes sense because it's a lower priced one. But Sunon is what I normally look for when I'm getting fans because I, I've had nothing but great quality with those. I even, I found some old laptops someone threw away and they had Sunon fans in them. And they were completely packed with dust from just running for who knows how long. Um, and I just blew out the fans and they worked immediately and they're still working just fine. So I'm really happy with that brand. Stepper Online, like I said, I've been, have no complaints for them. Mean Will is good. Big Tree Tech, of course, I love. So yeah, it's, it's a good kit. I can't wait to build this thing. What do you guys think anyway? So is this something, some kind of kit that you would be interested in? If you are, like I said, I'm going to have a link down in the description. It isn't a, a new affiliate link. So if you're interested in doing something like that, you can use that link and Costs you nothing extra, but I get a little kickback to help support the channel. So that would be appreciated, but of course not necessary. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, I mean, do you like these type of videos, these unboxing stuff? I'm sure if you're still here watching, then you probably do. I do plan on doing some more, um, hopefully not as long, because I know this is probably already too long. But um, as, as is my, with my videos on my channels, when I do tutorials, they are going to be long and detailed. That's the way I do things here. And I don't think I'm ever going to change that. So. If that's what you're looking for is good detailed stuff, that's what this is going to be. Um, thank you to all my new subscribers. I see you guys coming in constantly, and that is just very, very heartwarming because I never thought that this channel would be able to get something like, like it is now already. Um, so that's a really exciting thing to be seeing. Thank you. Thank you to all of my long-term subscribers. Um, you guys are great. And um, this video is not sponsored by anybody. I, oh, I forgot to point that out. They did not, Seaboard did not... Um, give this to me. This is my own money. Um, fully self-sponsored, <laughs> I guess it would be. But yeah, Seaboard did not tell me to say anything. They did not pay me. They did not give me a kit. This is 100% my own money and opinion on this. So um, this is the real deal. So basically what I'm trying to say is that this video is not sponsored by anybody. This is not uh, even with my PCB way sponsorship um, for my channel. Um, if you guys are interested in checking them out, you can down below, but this is not a sponsored video for that either. So um, just wanted to point that out. But yeah, anyways, Thank you again. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing this unboxing. And if you do have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Any Anything you saw while I was about unboxing that I maybe missed and you had a question about or, you know, had some questions about furrows and things like that, drop them down in the comments. Give me suggestions. I love reading it all. And I do actually read them personally. So thank you for making comments. It, it's nice. As I'm building this, I'm not going to do a full, you know, start to finish build on video because I just don't have the time to do it like that. I'm going to be doing it in very small steps as I go. So if you're interested in seeing some, some highlights of the build, um, follow my Twitter or my Instagram. I'm going to try to post little, you know, step by step as I'm doing things or not step by step, but as I'm completing things, like if, when I get the frame built, I might post a picture for instance. Um, and then if I find anything more that I find that I don't like, or that I, I absolutely love, you know, I'm going to, I'll post and stuff about that. So follow me on those if you're interested. Um, but I will try to put together a video, maybe like some clips or like a slideshow or something small of, of a build. Or when I do electronics, maybe I will do a video on connecting everything and how to set that up. So we'll see. But uh, follow along. And until next time, yes, thank you for watching. And uh, get out there and go make something.
Have a good one.